Hey guys, it's Jim at Pokemon here. We did a pretty good live stream tonight. It's Saturday. Uh, we did two uh, hour segments. I'm going to link those videos together. But if you check the description down below, I'll put little timestamps for all the segments. And so in the beginning, we did like raw cards, just like a quick review. Um, I showed some cards in my collection. And then we also went over eBay and how to find cards like efficiently, how to you know search for things that you want and just go through that whole process. I talked about E4, the website I used to talk to other like collectors and just ask questions and find out info that I share with you guys. And then we also uh, went over the pop reports and PSA. And so I'll, I'll include a little timestamps down below if you just want to check that out. And that might help you go through some of the stuff. And um, this is some stuff that I didn't actually show in the, the live stream tonight. But check the description and then just look around, see what you like, whatever interests you, and um, enjoy. Hey, what's up, guys? Hey, I'm trying this out for the first time. All right, let me see if I can move this chat up. I figured um, I hadn't made a video in a while, and I was about to spend uh, like an hour or so just reviewing these cards I got in front of me. So I figured why not try to do this live stream. All right. Looks like we got six people watching, so I'm guessing this is working. So I figured instead of just making this long, like 40 minute one take video, just go through it like one at a time with you guys. So I got this huge stack of cards that I got in the mail probably in the last like I don't know, like couple weeks or so, and I figured that I would just go through and uh, just see like what's gradable and what's not. All right, let me see if I can pull the com the comments up. I'm trying to get all this set up here. Oh, okay, here, I see it. All right, let me get this comment thing set up, then I'll show you guys all these cards. All right, there we go. Now I can see the comments. All right, so I figured um, I would just go through here and pretty much just show you guys the cards. So this is a Legendary Collection Cosmo Holofoil. You can see it's got the different pattern versus like all those lines and stuff. Very carefully. Ooh, this card's actually in really good condition. There's like no corner wear or anything up there. So. Hey, what's good? I can see all you guys up there. That's cool. It's kind of weird like interacting with you guys in real time. So pretty much I just put the card in there like that. I just take all these soft sleeves that I have right here, take the little post-it note, put it on the back, throw it in there, and this would be like off the like two grade pile. You can see this card's like centered like really, really well. In the back, the condition there is like really good. Alright. Oh, I think it's gonna show you guys my phone and stuff. Whoops. So that's what my phone looks like. <laughs> All right. So I got the Shadowless Blastoise. And there's a guy, I think, on E4, which is the form that we all use to go over, like, just, like, rare cards, rare collections, just things like that, just, like, learn stuff. Um, he's actually collecting every Charizard in uh, PSA, like, 1 through uh, PSA 10. And so I thought I would do the same thing with Blastoise. And so I bought a bunch of Blastoise, like, PSA... Um, two, three, five, six, like all those. And I think this one might have a shot for a PSA one. If you look at it, like it's got all these scratches like all the way throughout. And then it's got some wear on the back, which actually this might be a little bit better than a one, but I figured that'd be kind of cool to get like shadowless Blastoise, like PSA one all the way up. All right. I'll speed up a little bit. I've got the Clemson uh, Wake Forest game on up here too. And then I bought these two Entes off a guy on Instagram. Uh, they look pretty good. He said they were nine, so they wouldn't get tens. And so, wish really carefully. Like you can see that light right there. Like it's got that factory scratch, like going all the way up. So right away I'm thinking like not a 10. It's got some like real small, like, uh, like spider web, like scratches and stuff. That's not bad. 
So I'd probably send this off. And if you look at the back of it, yeah, it's got a little nick up there too. So to me, this is probably like an eight, maybe a nine. Um, still, there, it's an Inte. So even if this car got an eight or nine, I'm thinking like I can still probably get 15 bucks because it's a unlimited Neo Rev Inte, which is kind of cool. But I figured I would do this live stream just so you guys could kind of tune in and out like whenever you guys want. That way, if you don't want to watch like one of these beast videos I make that's like 40 or 50 minutes long, you can just kind of watch me actually go over raw cards in real time. Yeah, so it's going to keep flipping back to my screen here, like my uh, phone screen, because the camera times out every five minutes or so. You can see this one's already a card saver one. Again, I would still probably say like near men here, like maybe like an eight or a nine. But at the same time, I always like to put these in like fresh sleeves. Just because, ooh, look at that line right there. Dude, that is an ugly line. That is that is brutal. That is really bad. Like, most of the time these lines, they just go through the hollow foil. They don't actually go through the entire card. Like, that, that looks ugly. Ooh. Like, let me see if I can get that for you guys. It's kind of hard to see. But it's like on the side of the card over here too. So what I'll probably do for this one is I'll just sleeve it up. I'll put a little pile on the side over here. Uh, what light do I use? I use two of these lights from Amazon. Here, I can like show you real fast. And so these lights are like Teotronics, whatever. And I got one right there. And I've got another one right there. And I pretty much just have two going at the same time. Helps me get the angle of the cards on like both sides. That makes it a little easier. And this Charizard. So something cool I decided to go for was I figured, um, yeah, I'll link the E4 page in a bit. Uh, I said to go for every single English Charizard in PSA 10. And I actually just bought this Charizard, I think from eBay, uh, yesterday maybe. And I think I paid like, I don't know, it was like 65 or 70 bucks for it. Because I pulled a few of these out of the boxes, like those Generations packs, and they all have this wear. And so I was just having a really hard time like getting mint Charizards. And to me, I think this is a good at a 9. And so even at a 9, I think I can probably... Maybe get like 15 bucks for it. I don't know. And again, you know, this little nick up here, it's like a factory thing up there. So it's kind of hard to see, but that's the only reason I think it would get a nine. But at the same time, like, you know, maybe I get lucky. Yeah, it's going to keep, uh, it's going to keep going to my home screen right there. So I'll throw that up there. Oh, and you guys check this out. This is really cool. So I've, I got a guy in the UK and he's actually been finding these for me and it's been kind of amazing how he's found these. So you guys can see these are sealed Machamps, right? Well, if you look at them, they're the fourth print Machamps, 1999 and 2000. That's kind of cool. Oh, okay. Let me pull this stream up over here. Awesome. And you can see this is the fourth print Machamps and these are actually still sealed and these look like they're in like really, really good shape. And so... I need, I still need one of these in a PSA 10, but they're like really hard to find in a PSA 10. I've only found like one or two of them and I don't know if those guys are going to sell. And so you can kind of see this dirt like on the back of it. Here. I don't know if my, I don't think my chat is actually catching up. So I can see the chat on my phone, but it's not actually showing in my, in my PC up here. And so this has actually got some wear up here. I don't think this is get a PSA 10 but so i probably won't open it if that makes sense i'll probably just keep this sealed because finding one of these sealed is going to be a lot uh more rare than actually grading it so i'll just put this off to the side and where'd the other one go so this is actually the first time i'm looking at all these cards usually i get cards in the mail i just put them off in a pile and just go through them one at a time i don't um do it like daily i guess you could say all right this one actually looks really good there's like no I mean, there's a factory line going through there. Not a whole lot going on. And then the back back here. I mean, yeah, this one's tough. This one looks like a 9-2. I'll probably come back and look at these again later. Um, again, getting one of these sealed is hard enough. Like, I don't really want to open this up and, you know, waste all that money, I guess you could say. Oh, did he say he got the charger of 65? Yeah. Yeah, I paid like 65 and change for the Charizard. And so I think with shipping, it was like 70 something dollars. I see Tryhard Gaming, yeah. And Fuzzy, favorite set, Expedition, probably. 
I think it's one of the most underrated sets. I think it's purely because it did not get, um, it doesn't have ultra rares. It doesn't have crystal shinings, anything like that. And so again, like this Blastoise, like look at how bad condition that is. Like I actually went on eBay and tried to find the worst condition cards I could find uh, for the Shadowless because I'm going to try to get those lower, um, those lower uh, PSA numbers. All right. So again, I think this might get like a one. Like this is really bad. Oh, that Charizard, the Radiant Collection. I believe that was from Generations. The set that just came out that you have to buy the um, like premium collection boxes and like the teeny set, like all that. Like you can't actually get it in a booster box. You have to buy those sets. I forgot what they're called. The Generations. Oh, and these two are really cool. These are two errors. I actually went back and forth with this guy for a long time. He's in Canada. And uh, you can see these have the, like the, like, it's like a misprint right here, but it's very consistent. It's like the Hitmonlee error, but the Hitmonlee error is like over here. And these look like they could maybe get a nine. I think one of them, like, I think this one right here could get a nine. And this one, you can see some edge wear up there at the top and then down at the bottom too. And so I always hate pulling cards on a top loader. Like this is like one of the hardest things to do right here. Oh my gosh. And this sleeve actually looks really good. But it's got some silvering at the top up here. What card do I really want, but I do not have? Ooh, that would be a tough one. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Let me get back to on that. I have to think about it. I think this card could get a nine. Let me think. Um, I would probably say the non-hollow legendary collection Charizard in the PSA 10. It's a card that I neglected. I never bought. And again, that's just like the non-hollow version that comes in a theme deck. So put that up there. And even though this is an error, it still looks like it could grade. Uh, maybe like, oh, it's got that wear. Do you guys see that right there? That little nick, that little indention. It looks like something that would give it a six like right away. And so I'll still take this out of this top loader. I hate um, keeping cards on top loaders and stuff. But yeah, a card that I really want, the non-hollow Legendary Collection Charizard from the theme deck. And then I typically try to always re-sleeve cards. I just keep a ton of these things around. Hey, what's up, Chris Weber? What's up? Okay. So I'm not seeing the comments on my computer up here. I see them like as they appear on my phone. And when they go on my phone, they just go away. So if I don't respond to your comment, just know that mm -hmm. I probably missed it. Okay. Oh, yeah. And this is Legendary Collection Charizard. That's cool. This one's really good shape. See, it's got a little wear like down here at the bottom. It's got a little nick up there. I think this might get an eight, maybe a nine. Let's look at this hollow pattern and see what it looks like. Ooh, you see that silvering over here on the right hand side? Yeah, ouch. Yeah, I think maybe an eight or nine. Hope, I mean, it's like a long shot nine. It probably shouldn't get a nine, but it still could. And so I'll give it a brand new sleeve. Most underrated card. Hmm. Okay, so this is actually a card that I bought recently. It's the Expedition Mew, uh, the hollow version. And if you think about it, from Wizards of the Coast, the Mew was the first hollow version of that card you could pull out of a pack. And so you could go to the movies and get the Ancient Mew. You could um, get the Black Star promo Mew. But that actual like Expedition uh, Mew that you pull out of a pack is like probably a card that like a lot of people don't think about they forget about uh, I'll put that one off the side what is this oh this is just a standard Blastoise yeah so I bought a lot from the guy in the UK with this and this blast was actually supposed to be fourth print but he sent me a non fourth print one and I talked to him about it a bit I think I actually still have to follow up with him but the cards actually look so good I didn't want to return them because I still think these could all get like nines or so how do you start a big collection? You start very slowly and you buy underrated cards. And so, you know, when I first started, I wasn't paying, you know, hundreds of dollars a card. I think the most expensive card I bought when I first started was like maybe like 50 bucks. And, you know, I was out of college, you know, working full time. Like, you know, I had a good income. And so that supported, then it just gradually got bigger and bigger as I, yeah, this card does not look like a nine. I don't know if you guys can see, but 
and something that's really hard to see on the camera is like the gloss. And so to me, I can tell right away, like this hollow, like doesn't have nearly as much gloss and it shows a lot more wear. There's actually scratches and stuff in that hollow. And so I'm not thinking like eight or nine, like I'm thinking like seven or eight, just like the, the eye appeal to the card, like doesn't look that good. And so I actually put this one off to the side. Pull this Charizard. Cool, cool. And I know I haven't typed to the E4 site, but it's actually the letter E, the number four spelled out, e4.proboards.com. And that's a website that I go on and just talk to a ton of collectors and get advice, opinions, things like that. Yeah, this has got a ton of scratches. Like, there's no way this is an eight or nine. Like, even the gloss in the back, like, you can kind of see, like, it doesn't look, like, nearly as clean. And so, and I think there's actually, yeah, there's a little, you can see that little stain up there, like, right there. How hard is it to grade a fossil Lapras? Very, very hard. I've actually never graded a fossil Lapras myself. Put that off to the side. Um, they were selling for like 200 bucks uh, a couple years ago, and maybe even earlier this year. And I realized how hard that card was to grade. And I was like, I'm gonna buy, buy, buy. And I actually bought a decent bit of them. And now you can see the price is actually like way up there. I have one listed on eBay, a Lapras for 950, and I actually sold a Lapras for more than that, like a week or two ago. Like this card, is, like you can see that line right there, like definitely not gradable. Like definitely wouldn't grade that. And do you guys like, you know, if I turn these lights off, like I've done this before, like, you know, you see the card, looks pretty good. Turn the lights back on. Ah. And you can see like all that. Yeah, you see that stain? That's what you want to be careful about. Yeah, so definitely not a gradable card. Um, Lapras is one of those things where like a nine um, could probably go for, sorry, a nine's probably like maybe a $30 card, maybe less. It's just there's so many nines out there because so many people miss tens that they just don't value them nearly as much. So another legendary collection, Charizard. Where you just get that huge disparity between like the 9 and 10 price. Look, I haven't even pulled this all the way out. And you can already see that stain right there. What's up, Mike Hawk? Um, I actually don't really play the game that often. So when it comes to like playability with cards, you know, I'm more just like an old school, like original collector. Just love these artworks and stuff. And so it's kind of hard for me to like advise you on like what if Roaring Skies rotates out. Just because, you know, I'm not as involved with the game itself. And you can see this card doesn't look like nearly as good. Like I would not, I would not grade this card. And so I mentioned this before, but like I'll take these legendary collection Charizards and I'll just throw in a binder because I think these are, you know, it's so hard to get legendary collection Charizards unless they're already loose. I think it's a card that'll eventually go up, but not a lot of people like that third print Charizard. Um, this guy, this is a freebie in a lot I purchased. Actually, this lot right here. You can see that. But I'm just going to see. The guy said it was mint, but I'm not too worried about it just because I got it for free. The most I spent on a card. Um, well, actually, here, I'll show, you the, I'll show you the card I bought. I actually just bought a card recently. And I'll, let me go get it real fast. The most that I spent on a card would be this right here. I bought this, um, I think I bought this like a week ago. You can see the first edition Charizard, which is kind of cool. And I got the, I literally got this in the mail like, like a couple days ago. So like not that long ago, which is kind of cool. But I'm going to go put this in storage in like a day or two. I got a guy trying to buy it from me, but... I don't think he's going to pay what I want, so. But I think this card will be one of the most valuable cards in the hobby someday. Not illustrator prices, but, you know, it'll be up there at some point. Which is kind of cool. And I don't really want to say what I paid for it, but if you check eBay prices, you could probably figure it out. Um, yes, yeah, so this card right here actually doesn't look too bad. It actually appears to be pretty good. You know, it's got like this little line going through it. 
But you can see, like, compared to the other cards, it has, like, a ton more gloss and stuff. Like, a ton more gloss than the other cards. Uh, let's just look at the front. So I never really posted videos of me looking through cards before because sometimes I get stuck. Like, like this card is one I'm really thinking about, should I grade? You know, because I think it might get a 9, but I think it might also not get a 9 because it's barely got a little bit of, uh, like, silvering at the top. And PSA doesn't really take off for silvering unless it's really significant, if you know what I mean. And, like, this isn't significant, in my opinion. But you can see, like, there's some factory scratches going across, which don't really take away from the card when you look at this because this is a beautiful-looking card. And so, because, like, I do get bulk prices when I grade, um, I'll probably pay, like, I don't know, you know, usually around 7 bucks, like, when you include, like, insurance, shipping, all that per card. And so, for me, I could take a risk on this card, $7. And if it gets a 9, you know, it could be worth it. If it gets an 8, you know, I could always bust it open, sell it as a loose, you know, near mint to mint card. All right. What's up, Big Sauce? Hello? All right, so I will actually take a risk on that. Um, I don't think PSA grades these. Being seen in the movie pack, that this guy, like, it actually got a crimp at the bottom. Um, I do have the Dragonite errors, where the errors are inverted, um, so the things down here. I thought this was just another cool, like, error, if you want to say that. It's more just like a manufacturing error. And I don't know if... Uh, like, I don't think they, I don't know if they grade this, if they did, probably give it a six. But I thought about just, like, authenticating this, just because I thought these two cards were kind of cool. You know, I, I bought it from the same guy on eBay. Uh, but I'll throw these off to the side for now. Did get this Mega Blastoise EX. Looked to be in pretty good shape. Guy didn't think it would get a 10 because of the centering, but actually that centering is not bad at all. And so... I don't know if I can actually open this up. I might have to get scissors. Here, let me grab some scissors real fast. Hold on. Oh, I hate doing this. There you go. I grabbed a stack of PSA cards too. Let me show you guys. Oh, whoops, all those fell over. That's terrible. That's like a big whoops. All right. So, are, am I going to Toys R Us? Unfortunately, I'm probably over the age range to go to Toys R Us. And so, I probably will not go. Usually what I do for those Toys R Us promos is I usually find a Toys R Us employee on like Verbank or something. And they just sell me like a huge stack of them. And I don't know if you guys follow me on like on Instagram. But I do post a lot of cool stuff there every now and then. All right, we finally got that Blastoise out. Let me set these PSA cards off the side. All right. So, yeah. The card looks really good. And I don't know if any of you guys are buying PSA graded Evolutions cards, but I would totally wait before you buy graded Evolutions. Because, right, I mean, last time I checked, there were five Mega Charizards in a PSA 10, and there was only one PSA 9, which either tells me, like, people are getting lucky as they can ever be on this set, or that it was printed really, really well, and there are going to be a ton of PSA 10s. So, for reference, for Flashfire, the Flashfire Full Arts, there were only two Charizards graded PSA 10 for, like, the first three months. And then, eventually, it got up to like 17 or 18, whatever it is right now. But just imagine, you know, three or four months of everyone sending in Flashfire Zards. And they sent in like 80, and only two of them got a 10. Like, that's probably a pretty hard card to grade. You send in six, and like, five get a 10? Yeah, that, I mean, there's going to be a ton of 10s coming up. Alright, yeah, so this is another 1990 2000. I do like flash fire. Do I like collecting just for fun? I actually do like collecting just for fun. I don't have a big eBay store. I maybe sell like four or five cards a month on eBay. I think I do this all for fun. And I actually made a YouTube just to really connect with other people. Just to sort of, ooh, this one looks really good. 
Wow. And you can see this, that fourth print Machamp. And so I did go pretty deep on the fourth print Machamps. Wow. You guys might be looking at a PSA 10 fourth print Champ. Favorite Pokemon? Jolteon for sure. It's probably the one card I buy doubles of more than anything. I'll tell you what, next time we do this live stream, I'll get the, um, I'll get this comments box up here set up so that I can actually see the questions come up as they go. Okay. Um, I do collect global. The people are really interested in Lapras. I think you'll find the greatest flawless. Yeah, just send me an email if you want with pictures of it, and then I can tell you. I do buy sports cards too. Um, did get one of these Magic Harps. I think this one's gradable. Actually, no. It's got this little mick down here, so I actually wouldn't grade that. Another fourth from a champ. Oh, yeah, this one's crease, so I'm not going to grade that. All right, you guys are going to think this is pretty cool. Check this out. An off-center reverse hollow Charizard. How much do I spend? I spend quite a bit. I don't really want to say, but I don't do this for profit, if that makes sense. I would say I do this mainly to collect from my personal collection. Um, I don't really... Um, you know, you don't see me buying like a $500 card and then selling it for $700 the next week. I mean, if somebody really wants it, like, yeah, I'll do that. But I don't really like market this stuff like heavily, I guess you could say. And so this could be an OC. Uh, favorite Pokemon is a Jolteon, for sure. I like the jungle Jolteon the best. Ooh, look at that. It's got a little crease down there. That's not good. All right, I'll tell you what, I'll put this in a sleeve and I may go back and take a look at this later. But if it can get an OC, that would be pretty tight. All right. Um, I did complete the Unlimited Fossil. Staff Stamp Charizard is way overpriced. I, I'm not paying $500 for a Staff Stamp Charizard. Um, staff Stamp. Yeah, I think if that card uh, got a PSA 10, I could probably hit that just because all the ones I've seen are not mint. And so in my opinion, like, it's probably going to be hard to find one of those mint staff Charizards. Look at this. This looks really good. What's going on here? Why can't I not take this out of the sleeve? Oh. That was really weird. Oh man, it's got a little nick up there. Maybe that's why the guy put that little pink thing on there. That sucks. I thought this was gonna get a PSA 10 for sure. And then now look, you see that card look perfect beforehand? And no way that's a 10. There's no way that's a 10. What are the colors for? I don't know what the colors are. Oh, they're just the colors that these posted stamps come in. They don't really mean anything. And so you can see it's got a little nick up there. So probably not 10 worthy. Um, my opinion would probably be like an 8 or so. But I still did get a decent deal. Ooh, no. I don't think that's an 8. You can see that the hollow full scratch up there. But since this is such a rare card, even in a lower grade, this card is still probably gonna um, fetch a decent bit of money and I did pay over 100 bucks for this card so um, <laughs> I will still send it in ju just to see what it gets but I am a little disappointed there yeah I'm gonna take a look at that later I'll put that off the side so I did have someone post on Instagram um, when can you expect a video return as soon as the cards get back, the 15 card grade, they have not been graded by PSA. So once they get graded, then they have PSA has to send back to me. So that submission video I posted like a month ago, I still have not got that in. Someone posted these on Instagram. I thought they were really cool. Apparently the hollow foil versions are harder to get and they're actually a lot more expensive on eBay. And so I found a full set of these. I haven't taken these out to look at it, but the eBay seller was like a really cool seller. And you can see these sleeves, like that's pretty cool. Like Alakazam is probably my second favorite Pokemon. And so here's the moment of truth. Will that set get a PSA 10? And this is like what's really hard to take these cards out of the sleeve. 
I, oh, these are double sleeved. Nice. Nice. That is like the best. Ooh. Yeah, these look really good. Okay, let me just go ahead and sleeve this up real fast. Have I ever been sold a fake card? Yes, I have. I had to return it to the guy, and the response I got was that it was uh, his mom, and the guy's mom said that he shouldn't have been selling on my eBay account, something, something. So apparently it was like a 10-year-old kid that was listing this card on eBay, and it was an off-center card that had been like cut like with hand, like by hand and stuff. And so, but there's a lot of ways to tell if a card's fake. And so every single Pokemon card uh, will have like a black, a thin black layer going through the card. And if you shine a light through it, like if I put a light on this side, I should not be able to see the light coming through. And a lot of people that make fake cards to save money, they don't put that black layer between the card, like between the two, you know, the front and the back of the card. And that's the easiest way to tell if there's a fake. All right, so Lieutenant Surge. I actually like this style right here because it makes it a lot easier to get out. I just hope that these are all mint. Like that's kind of cool. Yeah, I mean these cards are. This might be like a ten set of trainers. Wouldn't that be tight? But no one PSA. They'll probably give me like, I don't know, seven nines and then like one ten. That would suck. Um, on some good news. I am going to be taking all these cards to my main collection. I think you guys know that I don't keep it here with me for obvious reasons. But when I go see that main collection, I think I'm going to make some videos of the sets. And then I'll probably post some videos on YouTube of like different sets that I've completed. It's like I've completed like Unlimited Jungle, Unlimited Fossil, the things like that. And so you'll get to see like complete PSA 10 sets whenever I do like take care of those. Uh, these are all my cards. These are all cards, hey, let's game. These are all cards that I bought like over like last like week or two. Actually, maybe like three or four weeks. And these are all cards that I'm gonna grade for my personal collection. You know, some cards that I see that I just think like look cool, like these, you know, I, I don't really go after these cards, but in my opinion, like that's a sick card. This is a really cool looking card I'll pick up. But I do have a set list of collection goals that I'm going after. And that's every Wizards of the Coast Hollow which Wizards of the Coast, uh, they made the Pokemon cards up to about 2002, maybe 2003, I guess, for Sky Ridge. Get every single hollow foil card that they made in a PSA 10. And when it comes to, like first print runs, like first edition, I think I have like 98% of them. And then when it comes to like unlimited, I'm at, I think like 89% of them. And so I'm actually really, really close. Then if you factor like error cards in there, do you have a collection video or do you make... Um, I don't have one yet because what I wanted to do is like post each set individually. Because if I made like a collection video, you know, you guys would probably just scroll to the Charizards and like not watch anything else. But I may... I thought there might have been a crease right there. But I'll probably make one. I do have a playlist that shows all the different sets that I've, you know, made. Because when I started making videos on YouTube, I think like back in 2014 or... I think um, I did make a video of each set that I recorded. But I have updated quite a few of them. All right, now we got the Sabrina. It's kind of cool. Cards that I think like may never exist or might be really, really hard to find at some point is going to be like pre-release Cofable. When I collect all the non hollows because uh, it's too expensive. But I am on the same page as you, PSA Pokemon. Um, I do have quite a few non hollow mint cards. And I did collect three different sets. Neo Revelation in first edition. Um, Shadowless. And fourth print base set. I'm one card away from a full Shadowless set. And I'm just missing Onyx in PSA 10 Shadowless. And from fourth print, I'm missing, um, I'm trying to think. I think I'm missing like 15 cards or so for like a full, like, you know, 102 card set, something like that. Or it might be a little bit more. Um, I did pre order quite a few Evolutions cases, but whenever it came time to, because I told the guy, 
um, not to place the order until I told him to because I was getting hit like from four or five different people at once to buy like their collections and stuff. And I was like, you know, if I get a really good deal on like a collection, you know, I don't really want to, you know, buy evolutions. And so he didn't like, I, I kind of placed the pre-order, but didn't actually submit the pre-order. And then what happened was I was approached to buy this Charizard. And whenever I ended up buying this Charizard, I canceled my evolutions order. And so I, I don't actually own any of the evolutions cases, if that makes sense because I thought this was a little bit cooler. Um, so that's what happened with Evolutions. I didn't actually go through with that purchase. Um, but I've seen a lot of videos. And this is, I think I bought these cards off a guy in uh, Greece, maybe. And this comes from that play set. It's, it's just a promo set. It's got all these in a hollow. And I really like the Evolutions. And so I thought that'd be kind of cool to get all these. Um, there is some, like... I don't know what you call it, silvering at the top. Oh, you see that? Oh, this just like breaks. This kills me. Like right when you look at a car and you see all that. Oh, you see that? I hate it when that happens. So like I would not grade this card. And I don't really want to bore you guys just by going through a ton of these. I got to get some more sleeves out. Just by like going through like a ton of these and stuff. Because I bought five sets, hoping that I could pull at least like one mint card from each set. Oh yeah, you see that right up there at the top? That sucks. So I will probably not be grading most of these cards, which is kind of unfortunate. I'll probably just put these in a binder or something. But like, still, like that Umbreon's kind of cool. You know, it's not like a Neo Discovery Umbreon, but at the same time, that's not a bad card. Which sucks, but hey, it is what it is. Oh yeah, dude, it's on all of them. You guys can see that. Oh man. See the thing that stinks is like that guy's in Greece. And so if I were to send this back to him, it would cost like, you know, a ton. Look at the window, you can see me. Oh, I don't know. Maybe you can. Um what is the Shining Cell be worth? I'm not exactly sure. I haven't followed that card in a while. So I did buy a few of these sets. I don't want to make this go on all night. Um, how do you keep track of your collection? I have everything in Excel. And so I monitor the entire collection in Excel, the prices I paid, everything, what people want to buy things for. I know how much money I've gained or lost in a collection. I do that pretty much in real time, which is cool. So I figured I'd just show you guys some cards I bought. And then if you guys still have questions, I can just keep answering them until you guys feel good. But I don't mind buying some of the Black Sword promos in a PSA 10. Do you prefer Ultra Roads or Semi Rigids? Um, I think a lot of people probably prefer the the Card Saver ones because they're bigger. But the Ultra Pro, um, I just I've always liked them. I don't know if it's just a name brand thing. Like I like Nike over you know a non name brand. I, I, I mean, Card Saver ones just don't have that like. It's kind of weird, I guess you could say. I tend to just stick with Ultra Pro. Even though they're smaller, it's harder to take the cards out. I just tend to stick with Ultra Pro. So Shadowless Dragonair. Um, I bought this for another set I'm building. So I do have a few different Legendary Collection sets going on. Uh, shout out to this dude. He's the guy I got it from. It's kind of cool. Oh, you guys are going to like this. So remember earlier when I was talking about that PSA 10 Charizard set I was thinking about going for? Well, <laughs> I kind of you know went in on it a little bit. I don't know, picking up this Plasma Storm Charizard, which is really cool. This actually came in, I think, yesterday. So that was sick. That's really cool. And then also got a Gold Star Charizard. Did not own one of these. Again, I usually stick to Wizards of the Coast, which is, you know, 2003 and earlier. So that's, like, really, really cool. And then, of course, you get the Generations. I got this kind of on the lower end of what they were going for, so I felt pretty good about it. But Evolutions is going to kill me. I mean, it literally has, like, six different Charizards that you have to get from Evolution. It's like, that's a lot. And so I'm not looking forward to getting all six of those. And then let's we'll keep going. I've got a little stack of these. These are all, like, collection cards. I got two PSA 8s. I think I bought this from a guy on Instagram, which is kind of cool. Um, I love Legendary Collections, so usually when these pop up, I'll buy them. Recently, the last like two or three that have popped up have been over the price point I usually mm -hmm. get them at. 
So if those sellers reduce their prices, I'll grab them. But I feel like I'm keeping the market afloat with these because anyone that lists, I just pick up. But I'm not going to just buy every one of them just to do it. You sent me two emails with the fossil. Okay, I'll check my email. I, d I don't have notifications turned off. So if someone texts me, like you guys will see it. And this is my first time live streaming. So I am like kind of trying to figure this out. Uh, another Black Star promo. Uh, just Neo Rev. I love Neo Rev. What else? Let me make some room for these. Um, Gold Board Me Out. Thought that was kind of cool. I did pick that up. It's a promo I just completely forgot about completely forgot about uh, this is going for the unlimited uh, neo genesis set so neo genesis and neo rev are the two sets that i'm struggling with the most of them limited i think i'm missing at least five cards in both of them whereas like each gem set i'm only missing one card um like no symbol hollow missing one card but for some reason neo genesis and revelation like they're killing me like i've got the neo destiny set complete but the genesis set like the like nobody grades unlimited yeah, I'll read this chat later. I'll go back through and read it later. I just can't see everything like right now. Did get the unlimited Hitmon Lee from Fossil. This this is actually the last card I needed for Fossil, so this completed that set. This is actually building another legendary co collection set I have, and so I did buy this from Gary, King Pokemon on eBay. It's kind of nice. What is this? Oh, this is going for the the fourth print set. So Night Time 2000. It's one of the cards I needed. I think they will be worth something. Actually, earlier in the day today, I was watching speedruns from Mario Sunshine, uh, Mario Kart 64. I was just like binge watching these like Mario speedruns, and Mario is an iconic character. When you like blend Pokemon and Mario together, I think you have something pretty cool. Now it's hard to say how valuable they're going to be because they're I mean they're printing like the living crap out of these Pikachu things, and so you know value's got a lot of different things like how old is it, how rare is it, how collectible is it, all that stuff. Um, anywhere from Crab Rock, um, Crack Rock McCabe. Yeah, I actually text Crack Rock McCabe pretty often. So Crack Rock McCabe and I are actually like good friends. Um, I mean, he and I, I mean, we still communicate. So I know he, he wants to keep his privacy, but he is alive. He's well, and uh, things are actually going really well for him. So this is 1999-2000, fourth print. So I don't know if you guys saw those eBay auctions that went up. Well, they weren't auctions. They were like buy nows, but I did get these two. My Instagram is Jim at Pokemon. Literally my YouTube name without spaces. So fourth print hollows. And I know a few people that really, really want these cards. Um, this card right here, it actually it, there's actually one listed on eBay for like a thousand bucks, which is crazy. Um, it actually went, it actually listed right after this one sold. I mean to me. But so these are two more hollows knocked off the fourth print base set, which is really, really cool. Any trusted eBay stores we could buy from? All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reveal one of my sources, okay? One of my sources for really mint cards. Are you guys ready? There's a guy on eBay. His name is Ed Merler. Let me write this down for you guys. Ed Merler. If he lists a card and it says mint, there's a really, really good chance it's in mint to gym mint condition. Um, when I buy from this guy, he charges above, he charges like higher prices. And so like you might buy an $8 card from someone, he's going to charge you 11. But if I buy like an $11 card from this guy, probably about 70% of the cards I buy from him, I can send off get graded and they'll get nines and tens. Like he is really good. He's very respected in the hobby. Um, he has a ton of inventory. Usually when he lists something, like if he lists a legendary collection reverse hollow, I get an alert on my phone and then I'll just click buy it now for everything he lists. Like th that's a guy that I get a lot of stuff from. Um, I don't get probably, I mean, I don't buy everything from him, but I usually, if I hop at his eBay page, I'll pick up like 300 bucks worth of cards like at once. And then they'll all grade like really high. And he's really good about, you know, making sure the cards are met. And so that's a guy I trust. That, that's probably one of the most like reliable sources for ungraded cards simply because he does not grade cards. Yeah, that's his, this is his eBay username. So if you go to eBay and you type and you like search by usernames, um, you'll find them. And so you got to search by eBay users. I do buy uh, booster boxes. Okay, I'll tell you what. Give me like 30 seconds 
and I'll show you guys, this is a video I'm gonna make, I haven't made it yet, but I'll show you guys something really cool. I gotta go grab this box though. Can you guys see me on there? I don't know, probably. All right, hold on. Let me pull this back. All right, so I did, these are, oh yeah, these are going for my no symbol set. So these are just some Jolteons I got. I think you guys know, like, I love Jolteon. And I do not have a PSA 10. Like, PSA 10 is like, I cannot find one for whatever reason. All right, so let me show you guys these booster boxes. Uh, how many PSA cards do I have in total? A lot, I don't wanna think about it. Um, probably like, it's in the thousands. Hi John, how are you? All right, so look at this. Yeah, I actually found another one of these. I was, I'm, I'll still make a video on this. I haven't made a video yet. I thought you guys would like this. It's got the Curve logos. And so this is a base set booster box. Blue wing Charizards. You bought two and four jungle packs. That's actually really lucky. That's really lucky. I'll check that video out later. And you can see it's 1992,000. So this has a fourth print cards in there. And if you look in the bottom right here, you can see it says made in the UK. Okay, so I've actually posted a video of me like opening one of these. I did not get the fourth print hollows and stuff out of this. But I'm gonna show you guys something else that's gonna like blow your mind. It's like something that's so rare. I've only seen one other one about it. Yeah, it says invalid username. Um, I've gotta, th I mean, I might be able to show you guys like his eBay store. I just gotta be really careful with like I don't know. I don't want to show you guys too much like my personal information, but I could pull up on my eBay app and then like I could show you like, you know what it looks like. All right, so here I'm still unwrapping this box real fast. All right, but this next, oh wait, wrong booster box. All right, you know the Expedition booster box? Hold on, let me go grab it real fast. Give me a second. All right, here we go. Best worst Pokemon card yet may not make sense. Um, I mean, best card is gonna be uh, Charizard. Worst, I don't know, a card that I thought was gonna get a good grade and just got a terrible grade. I've had that happen a few times. You cannot get a booster box graded. If you have a sealed video game, you can get those graded, but not a booster box. You can get booster packs graded. So, this booster box looks very similar to the other one um, that I showed. But I want you guys to take a real hard look at this, okay? I want you to tell me what's different. There's something different about this booster box. It says 2000. It's got the curved logos that makes this box a lot rarer. You ready for it? Boom. Oh my gosh, made in Australia. Yeah, I found one of these and I was like, holy cow, holy cow. Like, that is sick. Like, that is sick. I I've never seen someone open one of these. Now, I did find one on the Charizard Authorities channel where um, he, you know, it's part of a sealed boost box collection, but I have never seen one on eBay outside of like this one right here. And look at like how like good this looks. Like those are sharp corners, everything. And hey, I'll bring that other booster box back up here. Um, Black Triangle is ultra rare, but the thing is like, you can never really get a sealed one because you just don't know if they have the Black Triangle packs. Like, so for Shadowless boxes, 
you can press on this up here and you can look in, you can kind of see if it's shadowless, um, kind of. It's not 100% accurate, but it still helps you. Black triangle, you cannot see the triangle, so it's hard to tell. But you can see like this booster box, how it doesn't look like in nearly as good shape. Um, I think probably because there's a lot of questions. I don't know, Jonathan. I actually can't see the stream like up here. I can only see the questions on my phone right now. And I could probably fix that, but I don't really want to like let you guys just sit here without it like updating. Here, let me try to get it updated. Uh, here, I'm gonna try to update this chat. So I just put hi. You saw yours on the screen. Okay. Here, I'm gonna try to refresh this. So I actually live in New York and that's my background you guys just saw. Uh, that's one of my favorite places in Central Park. All right, okay, yeah. All right, so I can actually see the questions now. Unlisted leave callback. <laughs> All right, yeah, so this is a really rare booster box. Okay, yeah, so I think I can see the questions in real time. So if you guys post a question, I should be able to see it. I just refreshed, so Jonathan said hi. Josh is something I'm not gonna say. All right. Um, so, what other questions do you guys have? Do you guys want to see other cool stuff? Let me see. I don't even know what I have. Oh, I've got these on the grade. Those are kind of cool. So these are the box toppers, and this is like the best I could do. How do you know if it's fourth print? It has a 99 and 2000 date. And fourth print only applies to base set. So it only applies to base set. It doesn't apply to fossil, um, jungle, any of that stuff. Fossil does have an error print run. I mean, it's not error. It's an Australian print run with 1992,000. But when we say fourth print, we're talking about base set only. And it has a copyright date. So these are actually really cool. You can see it's like see-through. So these are the box toppers you get when you open up a Skyridge box. Yeah, I think Tony got three Jim Mint 10s, and I actually bought all three of them. I, I could actually show you the Charizard right now. Um, I've got it sitting right next to me, the one that he had in his last video. He did charge me a pretty penny for it. But I do have a decent bit, um, well not a decent bit, I have a full box hopper set, and only these Sky Ridge ones were gradable. So that's a little unfortunate, but small world. Thirsty questions, what's wrong with that? Just chill, man. Did you get the Venusaur back yet? Um, no, base set. I have not got the Venusaur back yet. It's still a PSA. They have not finished grading it. So a lot of those ones you see up there um, that are on the pop report, those are ones that were probably sent in like before I even sent mine in. So fourth print base set, it's probably, I mean, I think it's pretty valuable. I pay about five to six times what a regular base set hollow is worth for fourth print hollows. But again, you can open up a fourth print pack and you won't even pull like, you know, fourth print hollow. So it's not that I can just go buy a pack and get a hollow. Like, you know, there's a chance the packs might even have, not even have the hollows. They have the original base set packs in there too. Recording stop for you. Okay. You got a lot of gym mints. Yes, I have quite a few. I don't know what the Royce guy's Elite Trainer box is worth. I'm not entirely sure. Michael Jackson is an icon. He is great. Michael Jackson's a great dude. I think he's going to last for a lot longer. I think what America did to Michael Jackson was terrible. Distracted by the freckle? Yeah, you know it's me because I got a freckle right there. I don't even know how I got there. I don't even know what it is. It's That's how you always know it's me. Look at the freckle. Come on. <laughs> All right. Let me see what else I got. Uh, I'll show you this. This is kind of cool. So this is like... So not everything I collect is uh, PSA, obviously. But, I mean, it's a lot of what I collect. But this is kind of... Um, this is kind of cool. And so I did go to Worlds this year. And it's the first time I've ever been to Worlds, and I was kind of inspired by the cards that they were getting. And so, what I ended up doing, favorite Pokemon is Jolteon. I have a few sealed collection, legendary collection booster boxes. 
Um, I don't have a no rarity char, so I don't really collect no rarity. Uh, I mean, Japanese in general. And so you can see here, these are from the world's stuff. And so I started collecting these. I thought that was cool. I thought it'd be cool to get like a whole like, you know, binder of each year with like all the sets. I thought that'd be kind of cool. And so you can see from 2006, this is what they handed out at Worlds for like what uh, thing they got. How do I get the money to buy packs? I actually, I work a lot. <laughs> um, I, I, hard work pays off. That's all I can say. So these are from 2009. It's kind of cool. And 2009 has the DP48 is the number of the card right there. But there was an error print run where it said DP25. And so you have 2009. Sorry about all that light. Um, I started collecting back when they first came out, back in 1999. And so you have these from 2009. Then you have the full error. The error print run is kind of hard to find. And you know this is like $100 card-ish. Okay. Um, trying to catch up on the questions. Champions Festival. Yeah, but... See, the thing is, like, the Champions Festival, these are, like, the staff cards. These are, like, cards you got for, like, actually, like, winning. This isn't just the one you can buy anywhere. Best way to store cards and binders. I use these white sleeves because I think they look cool. They pop out on a black background. Saw Man and Gang, what's up? This is World Says 11 staff. So you can see a lot of them are missing. Now, these cards are available on eBay if I want to pick them up. But I think they're just like way too expensive. So I'm trying to wait a little bit and get like somewhat decent deals. So you got World Staff 2013, 2016. And I just started this set back in August. I don't have any tops cards. You sell those, probably make a fortune. <laughs> That'd be cool. Subscribe, Clash of Clans. What's my favorite card? Jolting is my favorite card um, from Jungle. Got the staff 2015, and then when I was there, I did get three of the staff 2016, so that's kind of cool. And then, let's see what else we got. Oh, I know something cool you guys would like. Uh, hold on. And so, after I saw like all those staff cards, I found these. Let me see if I can actually get this out here for you guys without it being like too much. All right. trying to coordinate like where all this stuff is all right and I ended up buying these and I thought these were kind of cool so you get these at like league and I just like like the hollow pattern back there and so what I ended up doing is and I don't want to knock over my camera here but these are actually staff Vaporeons and then I got a staff uh, Flareon as well and these EVs are staff too so that's kind of cool. How do you pull no damage nine tails? I don't know how to pull the no damage attack. For your coloring, no one can ever prove where the no damage nine tails came from. I've bought some of the uh, the uh, theme decks to see if I could do it. I've never done it. It says offline. Froze. I don't know. Maybe my internet went off. Can you guys see me? Hey, can you guys see me? All right, okay. So in New York, like we have really, really bad internet. Like the internet is just terrible. And so my internet here actually goes out like quite a bit. And I am live streaming off the Wi-Fi. Oh, these are kind of cool. You got the Umbreon and stuff. Oh, this is really cool right here. And so, like, I got the Staff uh, yeah, Dragonites. Yeah. You got the Staff Dragonair and the Staff Dratini. Oh, that was kind of cool. And these are cards, like, I don't plan on grading. They're just, uh, they're just cool cards, like, I found and stuff. I'll vouch for the better internet, yeah. And then you got the staff Machamp, you know, the staff Gyarados. And this Polytoad I thought was like a really cool card. 
Yeah, and these are just kind of different uh, cards. I mean, the internet here in New York, like it, it's it's good, but for me, it goes out like every thirty minutes. It goes out, and uh, I paid the guys. You know, I give them like a twenty bucks. I give them twenty bucks every time they come out here, like a tip. It'll fix it. They always fix it, but then it always just keeps happening. Like every thirty minutes, it'll go out for like thirty seconds, and then it comes on. I have no idea why, and so it actually is really bad for like gaming. So I can't like game on it, which really sucks. I don't think there's anything else back here. And give me a second, and I'll do this other side real fast. Jumbo and Oversides cards probably are not worth collecting because you're not going to get your value back out of them, if that makes sense. Just people don't collect them as often, and it's just going to be, you know, it's just not going to be worth your time because they're a pain in the ass to ship. Okay, I think we're on now. This might be another stream, though. So this might be like another video. I'm not entirely sure. But let me refresh my YouTube up here. And then we'll see if it comes back. Okay. Okay, I think I'm back on now. And... Alright, yeah, it's not updating for me. But, regardless, I feel like... You ever seen the Evolution's Hollow Errors? Yes, I have a star. I actually want to collect one of those. Um, I actually want to try to get some of the Evolution's uh, Hollowful Errors. The ones that have the, like, the hollow print on the background. But I'm actually going to wait until some PSA 10 copies come up. Can I show you my eBay friend, Ed? Yes, I'll show him in a bit. All right, so this is Shadowless Gyarados. Can you guys actually see what I'm showing you right now? Can you just say like yes or no? Can you guys hear me? I just want to make, sure. make sure you guys can actually see like what I'm saying. Here, let me type this. Okay, yes, okay, good. All right, so Shadowless Gyarados off center, which is kind of cool. And then, I don't I forgot. I think this is like a dark Porygon from Neo Destiny. I think so, that's kind of cool. The Shadowless, uh, Nido King. Look at this, this is really cool. First edition Nine Tails off center. So these are like really cool. The Growlithe, the Shadowless Growlithe, Tangela. This Tangela's fourth print, it's got that copyright date over there. I do not collect the Pot 5 Gold Stars. I don't have any of them. These are all like off-center cards. Again, these are just cards I keep in a binder, which is pretty cool. This is my Dragonair page. Again, what I was saying earlier, I think maybe before it came back on, is uh, that I took all the cards on the middle here because like there's this like curve right here, and it was like bending the cards mm -hmm. and the Charizards, which is kind of cool. So you guys are gonna see the. Uh, is it freezing again? I think it's freezing. All right, here, I'm just gonna turn off the live stream and I'll just stay in the chat if that's okay. Okay, yeah, it says 38 people are watching, so I'm guessing you guys can see it. Okay. All right, so yeah, I got some Charizards. So my laptop is actually still on the Wi-Fi and the Wi-Fi went out again. That's why I can't see y'all's chats. I can actually see it on my phone though. Okay, so we got Jolteon right there. It's more Charizards. Again, these are cards that, you know, like these weren't gradable, so I just put them in a binder. Oh, these are the error cards I have that, like, I mean, these aren't gradable. So you can see, like, the scratch pencil right here it has that little scratch, which is kind of cool. You can see the War Turtle, which got the Evolution Box error up there. Then here's another one of those Haunters, it has that, which is kind of cool. You got the pre-release Clefables. And then you have Yellow Cheeks and Red Cheeks. I know one of them's on error, but still, I figured I'd just put both of them up there. You got the first edition uh, Ivy Pikachu from Black Star Promo. And this is the D edition Butterfree. You see it's got that D up there, which is kind of cool. 
and I, I try to put the white background on all of them. That way you can see like, the card it like it like sticks out better with that white on the black. I thought that was kind of sick. Oh, you guys are gonna like this. So these are fourth print hollows that I bought. You see, you see 99 2000 on the date. And these hollows weren't gradable. So cards I tried to buy and grade that just didn't work out. You can see they all have that date on the bottom, which is kind of cool. And I'll tell you what I'll do. Whenever um, I post, uh, whenever the stream's done uploading, I'll just combine the two. That way there's not two videos. But it's my first time ever live streaming, so you got to give me a little bit of a break. This is the non hollow Legendary Collection deck. And you can see the Zapdos right here. So again, the different variations of Zapdos is you have the corrected version. You can see it doesn't have the, the error up here, which let me see if I can find it uncorrected. Actually, this whole page is just corrected. And so you can see it has a 1999 date. And you can see this one right here, it's corrected, but you can see it has a 1999 2000 date. So this one came out of the theme deck. And then this one, ah, gotta fix the camera. And then this one right here, hold on. So this one came out of the theme deck, and this one right here came out of the uh, a pack. And you can tell the difference also because this is a galaxy foil, and this has the Cosmo foil. I currently have everything in the top loader to take up so much space. Um, again, th I think this binder is, uh, what is this binder? It's a monster binder. I mean, I wouldn't say that they're the best, but they get the job done for me. And so top loaders do take up quite a bit of space. And again, my computer's not updating. I think my Wi-Fi went out, so I don't see all the comments unless it pops up on my phone. Got some more of these Zapdos, so you can see the date. And then you can see the date right there, too. Sorry about that light. And then another Zapdos. And this Raichu. You might think that's the fourth one Raichu from the Red Logo Fossil um, boxes, but it's actually uh, from the theme deck. Um, not really what I can say, except this is a whole lot more common than any other rare from that set. Uh, okay, yeah, these are gray stamps. Whoops. And so you can see that they got the gray, like, first... Sorry about that light. You can see they got the gray uh, first edition uh, stamp right there. Kind of hard to see. More Shadowless Dragon Airs. Because when I took all the cards out of the middle, I had like, you know, two extra rows. And then we have two more of these fossil errors. These are just, are these fourth print? Yo, yeah, actually, I think they are. No, just the Mewtwo is, the Blastoise is not. And then, I think it's kind of, a, it's, it's a gray sand gas. It's hard to see, but yeah, it is. You love the Starmie. Which Starmie do I have? I don't think I showed a Starmie. Oh, right here. Yeah, that's kind of cool. What else do we have up here? All right, and I think that might be it for this binder. Um, yeah, we got a few of these. These are just cards I bought at Worlds. Am I any Pokemon card subreddits? I am. I do have anonymous names on Reddit. I don't have anything that says Jim at Pokemon, unfortunately. Um, I do try to stay somewhat anonymous on those sites. Um, but, you know, if you're someone and you post some expensive stuff on Reddit and there's a random guy that just wants to buy it, it, it you know, it could be me. Uh, but, yeah, I, I am on some of the Pokemon subreddits. I will say that I get pretty aggressive on there and I do get downvoted quite a bit, <laughs> if that makes sense. All right, so this is what I'll do. All right, I'm going to plug in my charger because my battery is dying. And let me see if I can actually take you through this. Okay. So I'm on my eBay. Okay, so this is my eBay. I think you guys can all see this. Um, this might be kind of hard to do. And so... Okay. All right, so I'm on my eBay. And I'll show you guys this Ed Merler guy. Let me see if I can find him. Actually, he's not on here. I don't know why I can't find Ed Merler. Let me see if I can find him. Uh, 
Okay, hey, I'll take you guys through like an eBay tutorial. You guys wanna see some cool stuff? So usually when I search for stuff on eBay, and I'll find out later and I'll show you guys. So this this is the best way to search for stuff on eBay. So I usually always just type in uh, like Pokemon PSA. And then when I search, this is what you wanna to do to find everything, okay? I go to filter, I go to sort, so I'm on eBay. I go to sort by, I always go to newly listed. And then you want to change the category. So I think a lot of people don't see cards because they don't change this category right here. And so to change the category, you always go to all. And that way, you know, if people like don't list a card in like the right Pokemon category, then that way you can see it. Because uh, I feel like a lot of people, you know, they put stuff in the wrong category and that's where you get a lot of the kind of the, the steals, I guess you'd say. So worldwide. And whenever I go through, oh, Ed Merler. Okay, I see. I see what you're saying. And this is like how I actually search for items. And so whenever I get this, I'll go all the way through and just kind of quickly search things. And so I'll look at something. You can see it says 29 days and 23 hours. This guy just listed this card. And so let's say he listed a, a jungle first edition hollow for like 50 bucks. You know, I would just click it right away, buy it now, like quick as could be. You know, so that's what, you know, that's how you get the steals. And then eventually you can see where it says following like right here. If you type in a search, you can type, you can click on this following button. And then that gives me alerts. And so when I come over here on the side and I go to following, I can, let's go to search. You can actually see everything I'm searching for. And so another cool way to search for stuff is like you see where I have Neo right here. And so when it says minus Japanese on the backside, that means I want to search for Neo PSA, anything with PSA and Neo, but I don't want any Japanese cards. And so that tells um, you know eBay right away, nothing Japanese. Here, I'll search for Ed Merler in a second. I, I think I actually literally just spelled his name wrong. And then also when you're searching for stuff and you put the brackets, like I mean the parentheses, so that means I can search for Neo Revelation or Revelations. So I've noticed when I search for Neo Rev that some people misspell it. And so if you do the parentheses and a comma, it'll search for either or. It doesn't have to just Revelation or just Revelations. And so you can see I searched for the 1992,000 Charizard. And you can see none of these are actually base set Charizards. But you can see this is a base set pack. I mean, 150 bucks for a pack, you know, that's a lot. You can see I'm searching the Pokemon DP25, and that's that World's promo from earlier. And so, you know, this is 2008, but if you find a 2009 one like this right here, it says misprint. That's kind of cool. And then you can see I got my Legendary Collection one. And, you know, like this one's listed as an 8 for 19 bucks, which I wouldn't buy an 8. And then you can see this little dot on the side right here. That just tells me... Uh, when did I go to college? A while back. Uh, probably like five years ago I was in college. And so it tells me I have an alert. So if I click on the Pokemon PSA, so you have 115 items I have not looked at yet. You can see in this top left-hand corner, 115 items. And so that tells me that I can look at every single card that goes on eBay in a pretty quick fashion. And I can just like, I can quickly scroll through this and know if something's underpriced, overpriced. And that's where I'm getting a lot of the deals from. And you can kind of see everything else. Oh, here's Ed Merler. So this is what I searched for with Ed Merler right here. And so it's a seller colon Ed Merler legendary collection mint. And then I always subtract near mint because I don't want any of his stuff that's near mint because it's not going to be gradable. And so if I click this, you can see it only has one thing, which is something totally different. But, you know, if I click on the magnifying glass, let's say I take out legendary collection. And I search. You know, I can see all of his stuff, and then this is what I'll do, okay? I'll come up here, I'll sort by newly listed, and so these are the items that probably no one's looked at yet. And almost everything this guy has is in great condition. Um, but again, he, he's one of a few guys that I do look for regularly. But again, I, Ed did not ask me to do this. I'm just showing you guys. I think someone asked about it. Okay. So I'll tell you guys, and this is actually my watch list. So, ooh, these are ending soon. So, you know the red logo Australian theme deck box? So, these are two of the theme decks that are going to end soon. And no one's bid on them. And these are actually kind of rare. I'm pretty sure there's people that are going to bid on these. But I don't really have any other content for this video, uh, this live stream. So, if you guys want to ask me any questions or anything, just ask away. I'll answer. And then I'll keep it up for like five minutes or so. And then uh, I'll end the uh, live stream. And then I'll upload this to, to YouTube. And so see, these are just things I'm looking for. Yes, I'm still restricted from buying. 
I'll show you. I'll, I'll show you guys that. Uh, I'll show you guys that message so you guys can see that. So I actually can't buy things on eBay right now. Um, let me let me see if I can find it. Hold on. I'll show you guys. You guys are seeing all my messages. Hold on. Give me a second. I'll find it. <laughs> you guys are going to see like all my stuff. Oh my gosh, where did this thing come from? Is it on the Oh wait, that's not too long ago. Here, I'll uh, I'll show you guys this message I got from eBay. This message was brutal. I don't know why I can't um Um, I can't buy on eBay right now because there we go. Because I did too much buying outside of, uh, and so you guys can see that right there. I did too much buying off of eBay. Uh, I mean, like, I would message someone and be like, "Hey, I'll give you like this, your buy it now price minus like 10% fees," and eBay got kind of pissed off at that. And so you can see that, like, they told me I got my account. I basically got my account restricted. And so I actually have some people that are buying from me, uh, buying from me now, uh, buying stuff for me, I guess you could say. And so it kind of sucks, but it is what it is. So please do not message me on eBay. And this is my eBay username, Chunk31265. That's my uh, eBay username. If you guys ever want to see stuff I'm selling. I'll show you guys what I'm selling. I mean, like I said, I don't sell that much stuff. And so... Um, I did take down that Charizard I was selling. What's up? Uh, let me see if I got anything cool I'm selling. Oh, I'm selling this. This is kind of cool. And so it's a BGS. It's a 9.5. It's got all 9.5 subgrades. It's got the thin stamp like right there, first edition. Which is kind of cool. Um, I'm selling this because I actually completed my base set, and so I got the full thick and the thin set in PSA 10, so I don't really need any other first edition base set cards. Let me see if I can uh, show you guys other stuff. Oh, this is something cool I'm selling. I actually don't really think I'm ever going to sell this. I just keep it kind of just because it's like really cool. I've actually got this here with me in New York, which is really cool. But it's like the full like legendary collection set. And so I have my main set, which is like all 110 cards with like 75 or 80 PSA 10s. And then I have like a second set of all the cards that didn't get PSA 10s, which is like PSA 9. So I pretty much have like two full legendary collection sets. Um, I do not do middleman for PSA grading simply because it's too much work, uh, too much responsibility. Like if you send me a mint card in your eyes, you think it's going to get a 10 and then I send it in and it gets an 8. I just don't want people to be pissed off when they don't get the grades they want. Take it out on me. Um, I do, you know, work full time, a bunch of other stuff too. So I just don't want like, you know, a, a lot of like whining and complaining from like other people. And that, that's a big reason why I don't do it. Oh yeah, so this is Lapras. I think someone was asking about earlier. And so that's kind of cool. You know, Lapras is a pretty tough card to get. Uh, let me see what else I got. I got some Yu-Gi-Oh, but not too much. All right, so let's go back to eBay. Does anybody want to see anything cool with eBay? Like how to search for stuff or, you know, do you guys want to ask like any questions like how to find stuff that's cool? And so like here, let me just pick like a random thing. Let's say I want to look up like gem cards. So I'll just say like I want to look up, uh, let's say just gem challenge. And then I want to look up mint. But I hate everyone that puts near mint on their cards, so I'm going to say minus near, minus NM for near mint. And let's say I also don't want Japanese. And so I'm going to basically look up all gym challenge mint cards. Let me just throw on Pokemon. But sometimes if you put enough words, like you don't have to necessarily put Pokemon, but I'll search for it, I'll see what comes up. You know, immediately I get 344 items, so I know there's not some like sports card that's called like gym challenge or something. And so what I'll do here is I'll change my features to newly listed. I'll change so category says all, that's really good. I'll change to worldwide. 
<laughs> yeah, trolls are trolls are heavy. And so basically, I can see the cards that are just listed. If I see 29 days and 23 hours on the right over here, I pretty much know that this just got listed and nobody's looked at it. So this is a mint card. And I take a peek at it. You know, he doesn't have the, the blue LED light. And so it's kind of hard to tell right away. But, I mean, that card looks pretty good. I don't see any visible scratches or anything. It's only got one picture. And this is a buy it now. And so, like, what I would, I mean, you know, if I needed this card, I would take a risk on it. Because, you know, you can kind of see that the light up here, like, it doesn't look bad at all. You know, the, the gloss and everything. And so, in my opinion, this card is probably going to 8 or 9. It might get lucky and get a 10. But with it not being a sleeve, it does worry me a little bit, too. But, I mean, like, this is how I look for cards. And so... You know, I mean, some, some of you guys might wonder how I get these deals. It's just knowing how to use the search items on eBay um, and all that stuff. You can see all the stuff I looked at earlier. My most expensive card. Here, I'll show you. I think I, sh I think I showed you guys earlier. Here. This is the card I showed earlier. There you go. It, it's a card I literally just bought. And I don't mind showing this right now because it's going in storage like tomorrow, like no joke. And so that's kind of cool. But yeah, it's a first edition PSA 10 Charizard, which is kind of cool. Am um, I missing Flashfire Floor Charizard? No, I actually have uh, more than one of those, which is pretty neat. I think the Flashfire Full Art Charizard is one of the most underrated Charizards simply because it's the first Full Art Charizard. Now granted, it's not as cool as the Evolutions that just came out. That Evolutions Charizard is really, really cool. But um, you got to think, and I mentioned this earlier, that the Flashfire Full Art Charizard had a pop of two for like three or four months, okay? And there were like 80 PSA 9s. Think about that. 80 PSA 9s and two 10s. It's got to be kind of a hard card to grade, but the evolutions now is like so different. It's just like the, the pop is like the opposite. And so some of you guys that are pulling on late, like these are some of the other kind of cool cards I had earlier. Let me see if I can show you that. Yeah, like right there. You see it's got an ink stain. Uh, yes, you could buy a car with that. And yes, I did pay quite a bit for it. Um, it is kind of cool. And then here are two uh, sealed Machamps. Right there, these have the fourth print. So these are the things I showed like way earlier. Um, you can see that these things are that. And so these are kind of cool. I did I did pay quite a bit for these. Unfortunately, I don't think any of them are gonna get a ten. And I think I showed like four or five of them. But how much do you have in Pokemon? A lot. Um, too much. But is this still recording? Oh. I think I just went to my pictures. Yeah, so pretty much once I complete my sets, I'm going to sell off all the extra stuff. You know, you can see how it's got scratches and stuff on it. All right, I don't, I don't want to keep you guys here like all night, but if there's anything else, uh, yes, over 50K. Zach is a pokey slot. Uh, I think you meant a U instead of an O there, Pokemon Master 556, or uh, our boy Jeff. <laughs> Um, but yeah, if you guys want to keep asking questions, I'll stay here for a few more minutes or so. I am probably going to go grab some drinks later. It is a Saturday night. I know Pokemon's really cool, but it's not the only thing that I do. All right. Why did Crack Rock McCabe stop or delete his channel? He deleted his channel because he basically completed his collection goals. He was going for a certain set, Shadowless. He finished it, and then he didn't really have any other content. He didn't want to um, keep collecting, I guess you could say. And he, um, I mean, it's really hard for me to speak for him because, I mean, you know, I do know him as a friend. Like, we are, you know, good friends, I guess you could say. And I don't really think it's right for me to explain everything. But he basically decided that it was time to sort of, you know, keep what he had and then just sort of take a break from Pokemon for a while. Um, he may come back, I don't know. I mean, that's up to him. I think a lot of you guys would love to see him back. But, um, you know, he's got a life too. And, you know, Pokemon, you guys see all the YouTube stuff, but, you know, we are pretty busy people outside of Pokemon as well. So um, it, it's hard for me to say, like, why he actually deleted his channel. Uh, but it was a choice he made, and you know, I think he's happy with uh, where he is now. So if he comes back, I'll tell you. 
the blue binder all hollow towards the back. Uh, I'll open up the blue binder again for you guys if you guys want to see that. It's kind of cool. Uh, this is the fourth print Charizard set. These are the Charizards. I know you guys like that stuff. Kind of cool. Let me see if my laptop is updating. Okay. I'm going to refresh this page and see if it uh, updates. Do I have an illustrator? No, I do not have an illustrator. Are the newer sets worth collecting? It depends you. Hello, Fred from France. I still want to keep his channel alive. Mm -hmm. What would I sell the Zapdos for? All hollow crazy one. It's probably like a 2 or $3 card. It's probably not worth that much. Um, I mean, it's a, it's a cool Zapdos. It's rare, but I don't think it's worth that much. Why do you have cards out of the middle? Okay, I took the cards out of the middle because if you see this right here, like look, see it's like bent in the middle. What I noticed is that some of the cards I had over here, the cards were like bending, if that makes sense. And so I don't know if it's just this binder or what, you know, this monster binder, but I noticed that some of those cards were, because what it did is I actually had this thing, like it was completely full, you know, it was huge. And then like, I know it's hard to see, but you can see like that right there. And you know, what I was doing was, you know, I had these, I had these, you know, error cards, like these really rare error cards. And they were in the middle and they were bending a little bit and I hated that. And so I actually took, I tried to take them all out and just like space them out a little bit. And you know, the outside seemed to be a lot better, but that's why I did it. Um, Ultra Pro Binders do say anything. I'm actually not entirely sure if the Ultra Pro Binders do. Uh, I actually had cards here for probably like a couple months. And then I just realized that. So I just got kind of paranoid and took them out. Um, Japanese cards do grade a lot easier than English cards. They look a ton better. I should look more in the four binder. Yeah, I did buy that four white binder. I think if you go to the other stream that I had. Thanks, Austin. I appreciate it. Don't forget to check your email. Yes, I did see the email on my main page. I saw that. Uh, wow. <laughs> Please do a giveaway. Yeah, I, I think a big reason I haven't done giveaways is because... You know, this YouTube channel is about me sort of just showing my collecting progress. I do actually give stuff away, but I do it privately. I don't like to share what I give away. Um, I have sent some good gifts to people before, but I really just, you know, I, I don't really want like, you know, I don't want subscribers for giving stuff away. I don't want, you know, that whole thing, I guess you could say. This is kind of a cool nine tails, but I, I think I do it just to kind of keep the channel as honest as I can. How old am I? I'm in my 20s. I like that you don't do giveaways. Yeah, I think it just keeps the channel honest. What's my current goal with collecting? Um, I don't know if, here. I don't think I have an Excel sheet that I can show you guys easily. Here, let me pull up a web page and then I will show you guys E4 website. Okay, give me just a second, guys. And Scott's gonna love me for this. All right, so this is E4. And I'm going to turn off these lights right here. What do I do full time? Um, I prefer not to say if that's okay. So this is the E4 website. It's just e4.proboards.com. And you can see how I'm actually trying to set up my live streaming and do all that. Like I was really struggling earlier to do that. And if I go to this live dashboard, it'll actually show me all your comments and stuff. Such a great man. Um, so if I go to this E4, you can see it says e4.proboards.com. The cheapest cards I grade, I mean, some cards some cards I just grade because I like them. You know, they're just cool cards. Like, I don't always have to have, you know, a $50 card to grade. And so, what am I, am I logged in? Yeah, so what I'll do here is, um, this is where I actually keep my collection thread. And you guys are going to think this is really funny, but I actually don't um, bump my collection thread. It's on page 12 right now. And so this buy, like, trade thing. Okay. Now let me see if I can find it. Okay, yes, this is my collection thread right here. Um, not my collection, but this is everything that I need. And so basically everything that I want is like what's, I mean, everything that I have is basically like what's not listed. And so this is me on this website right here, E4. And so from the fourth print, Hollows, I have all the ones that are not listed. Jolteon's the only no symbol 10 that I don't have. Um, Alakazam, 
Legendary Collection is just so hard to get. And it's amazing because with Ex Expedition, the E-Series, like, I'm only missing three cards from the 96-card E-Series set. And that's, like, unbelievable. Let me just go back here and see what the comments you guys. How much does it cost to grade? It cost me about $6-$7 a card. Um, I think Expedition is the coolest set, I guess you could say. In my opinion, it's my favorite set recently. What is my YouTube profile picture? Here, let me pull up my here, let me pull up YouTube real fast. I just don't want to give away too much uh, stuff. I'll pull up my channel. Hold on, just a second. Uh, this is my YouTube right here. Whoops. Show the Zam collection if you didn't. Right there. So that's YouTube. Let me go back. What does this all say? My YouTube profile picture. Yeah, wait, you said six hundred? No, it's it's six dollars per card. I'm sorry. Parlez vous français? Uh, it's six dollars a card to grade. That's what I pay roughly. And then when you add insurance and fees on top of that, basically ends up being about um, you know it's a little over seven dollars a card for me to grade. And then when you come down here to the unlimited sets, so if you notice, um, jungle and base and, and fossil are all missing because I completed them. And so I'm only missing three from Team Rocket, one from Jim Heroes. Um, I don't earn hardly that much. I've actually never withdrawn money from YouTube. And so I do know I get some ad revenue, but I don't, you know, count on it. I mean, I do throw up the ads when they ask me if I want to or not. But, you know, like for this live stream, I could have put ads on it. I didn't, you know, so I actually have not withdrawn any money from YouTube, if that makes sense. Um, Unlimited Neo Genesis, again, I'm missing the most from both of these. These are really hard to get. And then when it comes down to like completed set once. So these are all the cards I'm missing from Legendary Collection for the full 10 set. I don't know which ones would be worth more. Just check eBay prices, man. Um, just check like sold listings. You know, see what things sold for on eBay. And you know, like, I'm pretty sure the Evolution stuff is not going to start selling nearly as high. Just because they're going to print the living mess out of it. You know, they, they might have like four or five print runs. I mean, it could be as many evolutions as base. I mean, I doubt it, but still, like, there could be a ton of evolutions out there. And so just check, like, sold listings, see what things are going for, and you'll check PSA pop reports and things like that. Hardest set to grade in PSA 10? From what I go after, I would probably say Neo Revelation First Edition, in my opinion, has been the hardest for a lot of people. They have really low pops. And Neo Rev. Okay. Let's keep going down. And so you can see me pictures of Pokemon cards. Jubby Tube. And so Shadowless Onyx. Um, they might be worth grading, but if you... Uh, Gordon, if you look at the uh, pop reports on, eBay, on uh, PSA, you're going to see, like, some really high numbers for certain cards. Like, the Charizard's already at, like, 60 or 70. It tells me it's, like, really easy card to grade. And so, like, you know, if everyone's getting a card graded, it might not be worth it, you know, because you might lose money. But you just got to, you know, weigh all the factors in there. You know, is it an easy card to grade, et cetera, et cetera. How do you check pop reports? Okay, I'll show you guys after this. So these are the fourth print I'm missing. The Charizard. I literally just updated this. And so these are all the Charizards I'm missing for a complete, like, English Charizard set. And I know you guys are talking about that error. And so I made that a part of the list. Hopefully we can get it. So promos, uh, best of game. I'm trying to get those. I just started collecting these. I said I didn't actually collect initially. Um, let me see what you guys said. My friends say they are worthless. Oh, so you can see my internet went out again. It's not updating, so sorry about that. I can't see everything. Uh, box hoppers. I'm going for box hoppers. All right, so this is kind of a cool thing. Surprisingly, this card has been really hard to find. And so they say the Red Cheeks is the error version. It was only given out at one event. But you can pick up a PSA 10 Red Cheeks E3 Pikachu that's, like, really, really easy to get, okay? Like, really, really easy. I mean, you just, you just got to have the money and just pay for it on eBay. But I cannot find a Yellow Cheeks one, like, at all. Like, it just, I cannot find it anywhere. Oh, it's a girl that's want to hang out later. And so, if you come on down here, I think some of these error cards 
like you know, I think if they eventually grade, I think I'd want them. And then you know, sealed product that I'm going for, and I'm going to try to buy some more of those. Uh, which promos are you talking about, Soro Soro? Which promos? Unable to record video. I don't know what it's doing. Um, best of game, not a lot of people collect, but again, my collection goals is every English Wizards of the Coast Hollow in PSA 10 or the highest grade. I mean, if that's all that exists, like Prelude's Cafe Bold, PSA 9. XY promos, I mean, it's tough to say because promos are pretty much like you go to an event, you show up, you get them. You work at Toys R Us, you get a big stack of Charmanders. You know, and so. It's kind of hard to say when it comes to some of that stuff. Um, you know, with Japanese promos, like some of the older ones, you know, you had to get 70,000, like, points in a tournament, like, you know, just by showing up to League and all that stuff to get, like, an Umbreon from the play promos. And so, like, that's going to be worth a ton more money than, like, just a regular thing like that. I'm out here with my family to do the work tomorrow. And my family want a Christmas tree. I'm sorry, I couldn't see all that. Let me see if I can update my thing. Oh. First edition base box, I don't have any of that. Um, I mean, yeah, Mark, I think Mark's right on the money there. You just got to follow him because, I mean, some promos, they just print the living mess out of them. They're just not worth it. Okay, so let's go to the pop reports. Uh, let me pull up PSA.com. So, again, it's PSACard.com. Let me see if I can show you guys this. Yeah. So that's the website, PSACard.com. This is what it looks like right here. Again, you can see my account I put is Jim and Pokemon. And then this is the pop report. And so if I go to pop report, Pokemon cards are in two different places. They're in Pokemon cards, obviously, right here. How am I streaming from my phone? I Googled a ton of these websites to figure it out. And I downloaded an app called YouTube Gaming. It syncs right with my YouTube account. And then I had to read this stuff like a ton to figure it out. But... Um, it's actually kind of hard. I mean, I can if you want to PM me, I can walk you through it later. And then non-sports cards are where the Pokemon cards are at, so non-sports. And then Pokemon cards from Wizards of the Coast started getting made in 1999. And so if I go to 1999 right here, and I scroll down, you can see where is it? Pokemon game is where all the base is. And you can see over here, look at this, 12,000 PSA 10s from Pokemon base. That's crazy. So if I click on this Pokemon game, give it a second to load because there's a ton of them. You can see for Alakazam base set, there's 95. That's a lot of PSA 10s. You know, Shadowless Blastoise is really hard to find. 14. You know, that's it's a really tough card to grade. The last one of these sold for like over 100 bucks. I mean, it's like I think 1100 dollars. My bad. I don't grade packs. Um, I tried to do it once or twice, but to me, I think a pack's just so easy to damage. Like it just didn't. I didn't feel confident about it, so I never actually sent the packs in. So you can see the first edition Charizard, 100. And I was actually talking to uh, another uh, really, really uh, good friend of mine in the Pokemon community, and he was telling me that you know the first edition Charizard, there's only 100 of them. So if you own one of these Charizards. You literally own 1% of every single PSA 10 Charizard out there. Like, isn't that kind of cool? You know, so like that Charizard I showed earlier, that's 1% of all PSA 10s out there. For each one you buy, it's 1%. Like, that's insane. But, you know, you can go through here and see. And so a lot of people think like the, uh... <laughs> yeah, Blastoise is a lot. And so a lot of people like, you know, the really expensive cards, the Devolution Spray, you know, this will sell for like way up there. You can see there's only 25. And so, I mean, you, you want to go through here and see, like, what the lowest one is for first edition. But if we assume, like, that's the lowest one, then that means there's only 25 possible complete sets out there. Which I know there's less than that because some people have, you know, multiple. But I think, like, glass is 24. Look at that. So there's only 24 of these. You know, this set has been out for, like, 20 years. And PSA 10, you know, first edition. Like, that's crazy. Let me pull up the comments again. They have stat promos for each of the members. Store had, yeah. That's a lot. Yeah, there's only 100, but it's first edition base set. Yeah. Pogo Master 556 over here, one of our good buddies. 
There's only 100, yeah. So how am I checking the pop reports? I'll go through this again for you guys. And so up here, let me pull up the website again. And so again, this is the PSA card website right there. Just psacard.com. I pull that up. Sorry, hold on. They've graded this many cards. It's a ton of cards. So psacard.com. And I gotta find my mouse. I have a wireless mouse. Pop report, which is right there. I scroll down to non-sports cards. Japanese base set. There is a, there are PSA 10 Japanese base sets out there, but not no rarity, if that makes sense. So no rarity is like a very sort of hard to find variation of Japanese base, which is like the true first edition print run. But um, you know, I don't know if there's a 10 set of that. There might be, I don't know. I don't follow Japanese cards as much. So let's say we don't look at jungle. You can come over here. That autofocus. Is it working? I don't know. I'm just I'm looking at this through my phone, so I don't know if it's uh, working. So you can see Jolteon, the no symbol right here. I mean I can see that right away. There's only three PSA ten. So again, this is the only PSA ten card that I'm missing. What's crazy though is cause like Clefable no symbol, there's only three of those. But like I've got two of them, you know, and so I just like I cannot find them. It's it's killer. And so like another card, you know, when we talk about pop report, you can see Prelease Clefable. Um, maybe. I mean, I might. Who knows? I I'm trying to stay, like, you know, I tell you guys, like, I'm talking about Itchy Blastoise here. And I tell you guys, like, I collect for myself, like, personally. Um, you know, I'm, I'm sort of a, val a value collector. And so I'm not going to open up things that I'm going to lose value on. And so I try to always, I mean, for Pokemon, it's more of an investment for me. I'm not, like, let's go to the store and buy, you know, two Evolutions boxes, open the cards, and, you know, play with them to death. You know what I mean? Like, I, I try to retain as much value as I can. I do some things for fun, but it's hard to open up old packs and make your money back. And for me, it's not about making my money back. It's about building my collection in a very affordable way, if that makes sense. Although, I am thinking about opening up some very rare packs, uh, now that you mentioned that, Itchy Blastoise. And so, I'll make you guys wait for a future video to see that. All right. It's fine. It was just focused on the Pippin. Oh. <laughs> Japanese tens. I'm not really sure what to do with Yu-Gi-Oh. Yu-Gi-Oh doesn't price as uh, well as Pokemon. Yu-Gi-Oh prices dip like real quick. Okay. Any comment on future prices evolutions? Um evolutions will be like flash fire. I mean, it, the box prices will go way up. But again, you know, those box prices may not rise for like 3 or 4 years. Because you got to understand, like, you have to wait until they stop printing evolutions. For the evolutions demand, they're going to keep printing it and printing it and printing it as much as you want it. So if I call up, if I call up like a distributor or a store, I have to call a store, I can't call a distributor, and I say that, hey, I want a thousand cases of evolutions, he's going to tell his distributor that I want a thousand cases. And they're literally going to just print a thousand cases just to get everything, you know, set for me. And then whenever it goes out of like, you know, the cycle or whatever, like it takes like a year, that's when they'll stop printing. And so whatever that demand is, they will meet that demand. Whereas like Japanese CP6, I know Scott, like SM Pratt, um, basically talked about this a lot is like CP6 is a very limited print run. You know, I cannot get more CP6. I can literally only get what's out there. But for evolutions, you know, it's like Flash Fire. Well, they'll, they'll print as much of it as they want. But, you know, it's not going to stop printing until they stop making it, if that makes sense. And so, yes, it will go up. But you got to wait till they stop printing it. And then eventually go up as more and more people um, open it up or sell or get this focus. Yeah. Uh, what can you do with your Super Rare Mega Charizard XY base? If it's mint, I would grade it. If it's a secret rare... Um, the 107, uh, not the blue one, but the red one. Um, the red one goes for like, I think like 250 in a 10. The blue one goes for like, I think 400 in a 10. I actually need both of them. So if you grade it, I'll probably buy it from you. Um, I'm selling some old school, new school pieces of 10 graded cards on eBay. I'll check it out later. I don't know what your eBay name is. Do I work in trading cards? No, I don't. Um, it's just, I mean, like... 
I found out a lot from just people online, just talking to people, you know, validating the information. You know, you go through, you know, do I have an hypothesis on how something happened? Can I validate it? Is it true? Is it not true? It's just having an open mind with a lot of this stuff. But a lot of it's just stuff I found from other people. Good first stream. I'm out. Show some more miscuts. All right, Reggie, good, good, God. Thanks, man. Can anyone make a collection one E4? No, yeah, I mean, absolutely you can. I will say E4 is overpopulated with, like, very, like, serious collectors, if you know what I mean. Like, here, I'll go back to E4 for you guys. Like, I mean, most of the E4 collectors are, like, you know, this ain't Space Jam. <laughs> most of the E4 collectors are just, like, you know... So, like, here, like, you know, English base set first cards aren't shadowless. And so, like, we, you know, we'll ask, like, all these threads... And so they'll ask a question, you know, you'll have, you know, we have a lot of really good users. This is a really good user right here. You can see he's got all the gem badges from how many posts he has. And that's kind of cool. But, I mean, E4 is a really, really good community. And it's a really good place for any general questions you have. It's a very open and welcome place. Um, you know, trolls get banned, like, right away. Um, you know, if you're honest and you have, like, good questions and stuff, like, it's, it's a good place to be. Where I go from, I usually have my price quotes. Um, eBay is probably the, the best place to go, honestly. I know you said besides eBay, but, I mean, how do you make a market? You get a bunch of buyers and sellers, and you see where things end up. You know, if no one wants to buy a first edition Charizard, it, you know, the price could go down 100 bucks. Now, it probably won't, but, I mean, where you have the most buyers and sellers, where you're going to have an open, free market, that's where you're going to figure out the pricing. And right now, eBay is the best place for that because it's very back and forth. It's not troll and toad where basically they just said, like, you know, they just pick a price and they go with it. And they look at other people's prices. You know, eBay of buyers and sellers back and forth. I mean, that's like the best place. Uh, yeah, sold listings. That's pretty much it. I'm going to get off the stream and get on E4. Dude, thanks, man, Chris Weber. I appreciate it. True, true. Thanks, buddy. All right. I think people are starting to, starting to fall off a little bit. Hey, anytime, Gordon. I appreciate it. This is my first time streaming, so I am trying to figure out how to do all this stuff. Uh, I guess I'll wait another like minute or so, or maybe a couple minutes. If anybody has any questions, I'll try to answer them the best I can. Good shit, man. Keep it up. Appreciate it. That actually might be the first time I've cursed in this channel. My next grading video. All right. So for those of you that are left, don't hate me, okay? Please don't hate me for this. But, so I actually do grade uh, quite a bit of stuff, um, but I don't post all the grades. And so, like, you can see, like, videos and stuff over here. But I do have some videos that I don't post. Um, just, like, some of them, I just get, like, shitty returns. And so, like, some of these, like, like, I'll show you this. Is this, like, a first I'm streaming my YouTube, like, on YouTube? And so they're just videos like I didn't get very good grades on. I just felt kind of a, worried about it. And so I, that's that's a video I'll post or something. <laughs> that's like such a stupid. And so it's so like I do have like some videos I'm gonna post. Um, let me go back to the live stream. How long have I been collecting? I've been collecting PSA for quite a while. I'll fly out there and stream together. You can do it, man. Do it for me. Uh, Troll and Toad doesn't package things very well. Like I think they're. I mean, it's kind of hard to get out. The base at booster box. Yeah, Serenity. I guess I just I've always prided myself on bringing you guys really really good content. Like whether it's like a, it's a 50 minute video that just has like great stuff in it. Um, and I just don't want to post, like, crap videos, I guess you could say. So the Shining Charizard is Neo Destiny, and that's from 2002. Okay. Did you ever get around to open the base at Booster Box? No, actually that uh, production, um, I did sell that base at Booster Box Crack Rock McCabe. And that last BCBM video I posted in the middle of it, he traded me like a bunch of Shadowless Charizards in PSA 10 Shadowless cards that did it. I don't have a question, I just want to say thanks for your videos. You really made me a start. Hey, Max, all right, Max, there's a guy named Ludkins Collectibles, okay? I'm gonna type his name in right here for you.
Ludkins Cole, if I can spell collectibles. All right, so Max, that guy helps um, people in Europe grade their cards. And so if you reach out to him, he's on YouTube. He will help you grade cards if you want, okay? Sorry about this. I know it keeps going out. And so he will get you decent rates, prices, everything. That way you don't have to get a membership yourself and go through it. Um, he has people that literally send, like, hundreds of cards through him, okay? All right, so Tyranitar Arts. This is what I'll do. I'll show you how to find the, the Shining Charizard on uh, PSA. All right, so let me go to PSA cards. So I'm in PSA. I'm going to go to the pop report right here. Go down to non-sports cards. Let me go to the year 2002. And it's in Pokemon Neo Destiny. Sorry, I'm trying to do this on my phone. No, actually... There we go. There's Neo Destiny right here. And so, in Neo Destiny, if you scroll down to the very, very bottom, again, because of the last cards or like, secret rares, you can see Shining Tyranitar right here. For Unlimited, there's 31 PSA 10s. For First Edition, there are 40 PSA 10s. Then you have some things that are just wrong, like this Execute. I don't, I don't know what that is. The PSA is not perfect. And so that's your pop report for Shining Tyranitar. All right, let's go back to this. All right. Hi, no worries, Max. Hey, no worries. Yeah, I think, Brian, I think the stream will be saved later. Um, I did have two different streams going, so you can see this one says 50 minutes. I think I had another one that was like an hour long earlier. Um, I've got to, I'm going to connect the two of them. I've got to do that. So, yeah, I will try to put them up later. Okay. Well, I mean, they're not entirely permanent. I can show you guys the features that I have here. It's like stream options. Like, this is what I did. And so I enabled DVR so you guys can scroll back four hours. And so basically, like, sorry about that. And so basically, you you know, if you guys are watching and the stream cuts out, you can always scroll back. And then um, I'm going to make it unlisted when it first comes up. That way um, I can combine them and then repost them. Does that make sense? Face reveal. I could show you guys my face like right now, but I'm probably gonna wait a little bit. I can describe myself to you if you want. I have a, I have a beard with a mustache, but it's like trimmed. It's not long. All I have to do is hit this uh, thing right there. You'll see my face. It doesn't work. <laughs> I don't know if you got my email. Uh, oh, square cut. I stay away from square cuts. Um, so square cuts are really hard to validate, but you know, it's so like, it's really, really hard to tell, you know, is a square cut authentic? Did it come from the factory? And so I just stay away from them. Um, I don't know. I might do an unboxing at some point. A and N. Uh, dab, <laughs> not right now. Single lonely man, search for PSA 10 cards. Uh, not lonely man. Trust me. I am, um, uh, I, I have a good time. I mean, you think about it. I'm a 20-something-year-old guy living in Manhattan, um, sort of just doing whatever wherever life takes me. Hey, Jim, I just want to say thanks. Awesome. I appreciate it. Um, I am going to promote one of my uh, videos real fast for you guys. Give me just a second. This is my how-to PSA video. So basically, this is the video that... Uh, let me, let me find it. This is the video that I posted that will basically walk you guys through how to grade your cards and stuff. Uh, let me find it. Um, right here. So this video right here. Oh my gosh, I hate all this thing. So if you guys watch this video, PSA explained how to submit your cards PSA. This will walk you through every single step on how to grade PSA cards. Um, I thought I'm making an update for it, but it will basically just take you through all that. Okay, I mean it's I mean it's a long video. I mean it's 50 minutes video, but the actual steps of grading your cards on is only like the first 30 minutes of it. But if you watch that, you should not have any questions with how to grade cards or 
how to go through the process or any of that stuff. Okay. So I'm going to stay on for probably just a little bit more and then I'm going to get out. Unless you're done, I'm going to go see how much Yu-Gi-Oh cards I have. Oh, you can see all the analytics and stuff. That's kind of cool. Favorite Pokemon is Jolteon. You should get a grade if it's meant. Look in the back. I mean, cards on the back, they uh, they show wear pretty easily. And so, you know, if you see whitening on the back, I wouldn't grade it. Obvious Virgin. Okay. I think you guys would be surprised. Fly Swatter. Mm -hmm. You'd be very surprised. Can you do a Let's Play? Um, I, I don't play the game. Oh, hey, Fly Swatter, you see that? Look at that. <laughs> I got a girl literally asking me to hang out right now. So, but I didn't text that girl. I mean, this is my phone I'm using, so, um, you know, I I obviously haven't hit her up in like over a couple hours. But that's my proof right there. I do not have a DDS Blue Eyes. I was kind of reluctant to collect promos, and then that card got way too expensive, and it priced me out. First edition base set booster boxes, Itchy Blastoise. Go on E4, find it. Um, we have several threads uh, basically on E4 that talk about first edition fake booster boxes. That is going to be your best resource right now to troubleshoot that. I do have some error cards, Tyler. I'll show it later. Um, I mean, it'll be in the live stream when it uploads. I think right now you can probably back backstream and find it. But I just want to go through it again because I've shown them a few times. Shining Pools is a lot of good content on E4. All right, guys. I think I'm going to get off here. I need to go get ready and stuff. So I thank you guys so much for watching. Um, I'll probably try to put this on YouTube tomorrow. Uh, I do want to connect the two streams and just let you guys listen to it as we go through. All right. Thank you, guys. Have a good night.